A little help from his defense in the second. Braves up 1-0. Rafael for call. No better arm at shortstop in the game. Starts at 6-4-3. Hampton four shutout, but they took him out. It's more tightness in his forearm. Bobby Cox didn't want to take a chance. Nationals down 3-2. Jose Guillen knocks in Ryan Church. We're tied at three. Here comes Cox to the mound. That would be it for Kevin Grabowski. Next man is Nick Johnson. Boy, Nick Johnson is tearing it up. Two for three, hitting 322. Knocks in a couple here. Nationals up 5-3. Here comes Bobby again. Foster's done two. Top of the ninth, men on the corners, Braves rallying in the ninth, got a home run from Franco, but not from Bray and Pena, and then Rafael for call, caught in the observatory, bat on his shoulder, Chad Cordero, 13th save of the year, Nationals just a game and a half out of first, they win 5-4. Late since May 21st because of that strained quad, Carlos lining out to third, it was one on, Jose Reyes safe at third, bottom third, two on. Brad Halsey, the lefty, 24 years old, was awesome. You know, Beltran and Mike Piazza each left five runners on base, four of them in scoring position. Beltran, here's an example of that in the fifth. It was a forgettable night for Beltran. Top of the six, two nothing, Craig Council. This man still gets great hits. Chad Tracy, always Clayton score. And the surprise team in the National League this year is no question the Arizona Diamondbacks. What a performance by Halsey. 7 up in the final. Cardinals and the Rockies. Here is a fact bar on Mark Mulder. 7-0 in his last eight starts. Preston Wilson has a bat, but Mark Mulder's got a fact bar. Wilson goes down. Desi Relford likewise, I'm sure. Mulder struck out five over seven, but he did run into trouble in the fourth. Dustin Moore establishes contact with the server. Moore's fourth home run puts the Rockies on top, one nothing. The next man is Todd Green, and there is more server failure from Mulder. I hate that. Green with a line drive shot to right, his fifth. Rockies on top, two nothing. And oddly enough, in Coors Field against this potent St. Louis lineup, would turn out to be enough. Larry Walker up. A little 3-6-3 three, three double play. Albert Pools, by the way, 0 for 3. Rockies beat the Cardinals 2-1. to one. Hottest team in the majors, the Texas Rangers in Detroit looking for their ninth straight win. Kenny Rogers, speaking of hot, has won his last six starts, looking to make it seven against Detroit. Bottom one tie game. Rogers facing Dimitri Young. Rogers getting Young the strikeout on the cutter low and inside. Taking a look. Here we can see how the pitch drops down and in under Young's swing. Rogers allowed just three hits in seven innings. Bottom second, Marcus Timms on first. Chris Shelton at Rogers. What a reaction. Firing to double up Timms at first. Great play by Rogers. Keep Detroit at bay. Rogers now getting Pudge Rodriguez. Rogers struck out a season high six. Take another look. The pitch drops off the table under Pudge's bat. One earned run allowed by Rogers, so six Ks, and AL leading 1.65 ERA. Kevin Mench, number nine for him. The Rangers lead now six to one. See ya, Mike Moroff, eight two. Chad Allen fouls it off the plate under Pudge's legs, and it hits his bare hand. Uh-oh, see what happened. Pudge said after the game he has a fracture, but he will continue to play. He said, Pudge, I'm a tough guy. So are the Rangers. They're tough. Rogers wins his seven straight, including a club record, six in May. So Kenny Rogers, seven straight win, puts him in some exclusive company. Only three American League pitchers over the age of 40 have ever won seven straight starts. Rogers, Jamie Moyer back in 2003, and Hall of Famer Ted Lyons in 1942. So the Angels trying to keep pace with the Rangers against the White Sox. That's John Lackey, 4-1, 240 ERA in his last seven starts. He's dealing to Aaron Rowan, who has been rather warm. Knocked right. Taniguchi would score. White Sox on top, 2-1. Here is Joe Creedy logging on, and he is part of the Gone Network. Creedy's fifth home run of the season. White Sox up 4-2. Top eight, 4-3 game. Angels down one. Garrett Anderson. Anderson, who had homered earlier in the game, driving in Darren Erstad. We are tied at four. Bottom nine, Jermaine Dye at the plate. That ball hit way back. Stretch. Get up. Get where you can. Put it on the board. Yes! And the White Sox put a walk-off win on the board for the second straight day against the Angels. 5-4 is the final hit. Activated off the DL before the game. That was his first mistake. Top of the first, first at bat. Gonzalez on the ground, but he'll come up limping, running the first. Take another look. What happened here? The guy's just off the DL. 
Juan would have to leave the game just like that, replaced in right by Casey Blake. Thanks for playing. Top of the six. Goodbye. Silva facing Victor Martinez. You know, I'm sorry. Come on, think of the fans. It's about the fans. Martinez is fourth of the year. Silva, ooh, close and personal right there. Involving Jody Garrett. Bill Hahn, the home plate ump, would warn only the Twins, and Ron Gardner hates that. And he's gone. Gone, I say. <laughs> Indians win four to three, and Ron is not a happy guy. Gotta love Ron Gardner. Blue Jays Mariners. It's about the fans, Reese. Blue Jays are already up 2-0. Vernon Wells facing Ryan Franklin, two on. For the love of elevation, a three-run homer by Wells. And just like that, the Blue Jays are up 5-0. Wells' 10th home run of the year to the third. Wells back in the box, one on. Now, Seattle catcher Rene Rivera, first career major league start, right? Rivera fails to give Franklin a good target, and he's got that yellow line around him. Franklin throws it right over the middle, and Wells goes deep. Second home run of the game. Wells ties the career high, five RBIs, two home runs. Now we go to the top of the fifth. Wells in the box again, facing Julio Mateo. Gets good wood on it, does Wells. Are you kidding me? Could this be his third? It's deep, but it's in the park. Okay, two home runs, not a bad night. Blue Jays win 9-7. Ninth, Eric Gagne in the game. One out, runners on second and third. Gagne. This is his time. Striking out Corey Patterson. Next batter for Gagne. Jason Dubois strikes out swinging. Gagne gets out of the inning. Bottom nine now. Michael Wirtz on the mound. Ricky Lede in the box. Strikes out swinging. Wirtz struck out the side. Top ten, Yancy Brazoban facing Nephi Perez. Runner on second, Perez. Down the line it goes. Lede. Uh-oh. Yeah, off the glove, and there it goes. Michael Barrett would score. Cubs on top. Bottom 10, Ryan Dempster facing Antonio Perez. Oh, Perez is hitting the head. Take a listen. Uh. Wow, remarkably, he would be fine thanks to that helmet. Later in the inning, Almeida signs. On the ground, final out. Cubs win in 10. Carlos Zambrano and two relievers combined on a one-hitter. What about Derek Lee? Unbelievable. We have to follow this man because he's the host of the Brewers. Happy 24th birthday to Jake Peavy. Hey, let's take a look at the month the Padres have had. May 2nd, the Padres record their first win of the month, starting a 10-game home winning streak. May 6th, Trevor Hoffman recording his 400th save. And then May 27th, the Padres win the 18th game in the month of May, tying a team record. May 29th, San Diego wins the 20th game in May, first 20-win month in franchise history. Russell the Muscle Brannion. That's off of Jake Peavy, Brannion's sixth of the year. First time this year, Peavy has failed to pitch into the seventh inning. It's a 4-3 Brewers lead in the bottom of the sixth. Dave Roberts at bat, two on, one out. Roberts looking for space and gets it. Khalil Green scores, tying the game at four. Another clutch hit for Mr. Roberts. Still bottom six, Jeff Blum with two on. He's been lifting. Blum's fourth home run of the year. Padres take the game. They have a club record 11 straight home win streak. When you play on a team which owns the worst mark in the major leagues, winning just 13 of the first 50 games, standing 20 and a half games out of first place, you need help. You need a friend. In the case of the Kansas City Royals, you need a buddy. Tuesday, they got one in the form of Buddy Bell, named to replace Tony Pena, who resigned three weeks ago. Bell, the former skipper for the Tigers and Rockies, takes over a Royals team, which has the second lowest payroll in the majors at $39 million. Bell's debut for KC coming against the team with the highest payroll, the Yankees. Okay, his career mark, not the best. Said Matt Stairs before the Bell hire, I just hope whoever takes over doesn't pamper this team. He needs to make the point that if you're not going to start succeeding, then you're backside is going to be in triple-A or double-A for a couple of weeks until you figure it out. Joe Girardi, the acting Yankee skipper for Joe Torre, I'm sorry, that one game suspension, but still was working with Hideki Matsui in the cage. And whatever Joe and Don Mattingly said to Hideki Matsui worked. Over the wall off of Zach Greinke. That's a big home run for Matsui, who hasn't had many of those lately. Matsui had 180 at-bats since his last homer. April 8th, the last time he went deep. Bottom four tie game runners at first and second one out. 
David De Jesus, Derek Jeter to Robinson Cano. Cano, uh oh, bad throw to Tino. Ruben Gotai scores. Royals ahead. They're up 5 3 in the seventh. Runners on the corners. And then big play here with Alex Rodriguez at the plate. Tony Womack on first, and he is picked off by Mike Wood. End of rally. Girardi not thrilled. Royals would be thrilled they win the game. Zach Greinke snaps a 14 game winless streak, and Bell wins in his Royal debut. Orioles, Red Sox, Terry Francona. Looking for Boston to win this one after losing the opener of the series. Jay Gibbons against Wade Miller. That is deep into the triangle. Johnny Damon, there's that, you know, the wall. Oh, boy. Take another look. Damon smashes the noggin trying to make the play. Lies flat on his back. It looked scary for a while before he sat up. A bit dazed. Damon dazed, nothing new. Let's flash back. He's got a history of collisions in the outfield there with Damian Jackson in that ALDS in 2003. Who could forget that? That was scary. In this game, Damon uh, would have to have four stitches right above the right eye. But he would sit it out. John Olrude would come in. Good move with two on Olrude. That'll work for a double. Jay Payton would score. Time the game at one. Olrude one for three with a run score. Next batter, Edgar Renteria coming on. Coming on. Boston needs his hitting. He's doing just that. That'll score Mark Bellhorn. 2-1 Boston. Right to Rhea, two for four. Two runs scored. Wade Miller. Runners on the corners. Miller gets the strike three he needed. He goes seven. Allowed an earned run. Five hits. Red Sox win the game. Let's begin. In Philadelphia. Phillies giant story here. Randy Wolf on the mound. Six and two-thirds. Zero earned runs. Five Ks as the Phillies beat the Giants. By the score of... Five to two. What about the Astros? Well, they defeated the Reds despite King Griffey Jr. hitting his eighth home run of the year. But Brandon Backey now eight and one at Minute Maid Park. This the Marlins and the Pirates. A.J. Burnett has not won since April 29th. Top six, three, two buckos. Miguel Cabrera and Oliver Perez. Perez. Giving up 15 home runs this season, second most in the NL. Game tied at three. Daryl Ward against Nate Bump. You don't want to give Ward a pitch that he can pull. 3 2 pitch ripped to right field. Deep and gone. And he got a pitch to pull. And pull it he did. And pulling a win out in Pittsburgh, not the Marlins' forte. They lost eight straight in Pittsburgh against the Pirates. Buckos win it 5 to 4. 10 from this night. Giants and Phillies play number 10. Kenny Lofton might have to put an asterisk beside that one. Really? Well, there was some thought that perhaps it bounced. <laughs> okay, number nine French Open. Victor Hanescu against Roger Federer Hanescu. I mean, something's got to be said. You do this a lot at the ESPN Tennis Classic. Yes. And you do that as well. Play number eight. <laughs> uh, full of groin beyond the disabled list for 60 days. If I try this. Play number eight. Yes. Now that's Ow. talent. That's talent. Number seven, Reds and Astros, Brandon Backey. Oh, great reflexes to snag a comeback. Listen to the replay, shall we? Back to play goal. Yeah. Don't look up there. At play number six, the Fanatic in Philadelphia. You know, oh. changed in Philly. There's a lot of love in the air now. Oh, my goodness. Not if booing Santa Claus or kissing kids. Number five, England, Columbia, Michael Owens. Not one, not two, but three goals for the hat trick. And you get to see every single one of them. Man, you're lucky. That's what makes top plays so wonderful. Play number four, Yankees and Royals. David DeJesus trying to make a favorable impression on his new manager, Buddy Bell. Nice. And he does. They beat the Yankees, you know. They did. I knew, I knew somehow that wouldn't escape you. Number three, Heat and Pistons, D-Wade, flash to Udonis Haslam. There's that nasty dunk you were talking about. Kids call it filthy. That's true. Repent and be baptized. Bottom line, Heat lost. Play number two, Angels and White Sox, Jermaine Dye. Coming on, coming on. What do they call that? Call it a diving catch. Yeah. Play number two, but Jermaine was just sort of setting himself up. It's a... Double play there for the big fit. Number one, Mr. Die, not done. That ball hit way back. Stretch, get up. And where you can put it on the board. Yes! White Sox win in an exciting fashion.